All right, then let's start with what we're given in the movie. So we have this big black hole called Gar Gargantua, and it has a planet orbiting around it called Miller's World. So this is Miller's World, and it's a planet that has a time dilation of about 61,000 times the actual time. Oh, this is really cool. Look at look at the effect this black hole is creating. You can see there's a bit of a shadow or some kind of a reflection going on here. Anyway, so um. Before I show you, actually no, let me show you the other planets first. So we have Miller's world that we know is somewhere here, right next to the black hole. Then somewhere out there orbiting this black hole is a neutron star. So this is a, I'm gonna call it Gargantua neutral, neutron star because we're not actually given the name in the movie. And it's orbiting around uh, the black hole in such a way that it's actually giving enough light to the uh, Miller's world. Where is it? I lost it again. Uh, it, it's giving enough light to it so that it actually does have uh, t uh, good enough temperature and liquid water and all that. And this is a liquid world, water world with a gravity that's actually higher than Earth's gravity. This is why actually it has higher mass. And the speed that it's going at right now is approximately 202,000 kilometers per second, which is about two thirds of a speed of light. Now, I'm going to come back to this in a second, but let me just show you the rest. So. The, uh, neutron star is somewhere out there and then we have past the neutron star we have two more planets that we're aware of one is called Edmund's world this is the I believe this is the final planet where uh, the uh, female protagonist actually finds herself at and this is the one that's sort of like I, I decided to put Mars here and rename it but essentially it sort of looks like Mars it's uh, it's rocky it's um, it's, it's sort of like a desert, but it's quite comfortable. Uh, the temperature seems to be okay, and so uh, here it's 15 degrees. And it's also, uh, it does, I believe it does have atmosphere and good gravity, uh, or gravity that's similar to Earth. Or I believe it's just a little bit weaker than Earth. And we have Mo a man's world, which is even weaker in terms of gravity, but this is an ice world. And this is where we find uh, Dr. Man who ends up, I don't want to spoil the movie for you, but he ends up being not such a, not such a nice guy after all. And um, essentially this is the ice world uh, that is, I believe there's methane, methane fields in there and this, it's pretty cold, it's minus 33 degrees Celsius. And um, it is farther away from, from uh, the neutron star, which is why it's colder. Now, um, we do know that there's actually other planets here, so I'm actually going to add all of them. I believe there's a total of nine planets that are kind of mentioned briefly, but we don't really know what they are, where they are, or what's on them. We just know they're not, not habitable. So I'm going to put uh, a few planets out there just so they can orbit around, and we'll give them a random names as well. And I'm going to make an assumption that they're actually gas giants, and so th this game does a really good job at randomly generating planets. So here's uh, planet number four, number five, number six, seven, eight, and nine. So these are just randomly generated planets, and they are these are all gas giants because we know that in the movie we're not told that they're habitable, so they must be either gas giants or some kind of other uninhabitable planet. There's one called Oranda, there's uh, Utate or Utati, uh, then what's the next one? There's one called R something? What is this? RC, RC, Arkinakon, and one called Stasi C, Stask, Stask, and finally we'll have one more called Orsat and Ayoth. So these are pretty, pretty original names. Surprisingly, they're all orbiting in a really funny manner. I don't know why they're orbiting this way, but that's cool. I mean, their actual rotation seems to be uh, quite interesting. Anyway, so I'm going to advance time just a little bit just to see how this all spreads out and how it looks like. And essentially, this is what the Gargantua system might look like. So there's a neutron star that's sort of a little bit closer to the actual black hole, or at least it must be closer for for the uh, Miller star to get so much um, so much radiation, so, so much heat. And then there, there's Edmund's world and Mons world somewhere um, behind it because we know that these two planets, Man's world and Edmund's world, do not have much time dilation. I'm actually going to show you how to calculate time dilation, uh, but let's just look at Edmund's world first. So this is the one that's closest. It's moving at about 25,000 kilometers per second, and uh, that means that there is time dilation. So let's find out how much of it there is. We're going to go to um, Wolfram Alpha and. If you look up time dilation calculator, it will give you this. 
and I've already done this calculation here. Uh, so let's just say 25,000 kilo, uh, kilometer, kilometers per second, which is 25,000 uh, meters per second, and one second in this particular uh, on, the, on this particular planet will equal to calculating, 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 it will equal to approximately 1.003 seconds. So it's actually very negligible in terms of time dilation. So it means uh, that it's probably even less for man's world, so I'm not even going to try to calculate it. But uh, we know that we know that if we zoom in on Miller's world, where's Miller's world? Oh no, where'd it go? Oh no, I think I got swallowed up by the, by the black hole. Did it eat my Miller's world? No, I have to make a new one. Okay, let's make a new one. Alright, I, I had to create a new Miller's world because my old one disappeared. I think it's actually, when you accelerate speed, uh, due to the proximity to the black hole, sometimes it actually accidentally enters the black hole and then it disappears. Anyway, so this here, this is, a, this is actually an interesting planet because we know in the movie that it's, um, it has this huge, huge time dilation, but here the speed seems to be about almost 200,000 kilometers per second. So if we actually enter this valley here, if we enter 200,000, 200,000 or 200 million meters per second, we'll only get time dilation of... Da -da 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 Time dilation of... Come on. No, I don't want to know. Uh, 1.3 seconds. Essentially, 1.3 times the um, time dilation on Earth. Now, that doesn't make sense, right? Because we know in the movie it's 61,000. Uh, they were saying that one hour equals to um, seven years on, on Miller's planet. I, I keep enjoying these special effects here. This is actually pretty awesome. Uh, but, so, what's going on? Well, how is it possible? Because look at, look at this. If I try to move it even closer to, in order to increase time dilation, um, it, it will actually get swallowed, swallowed up by the, uh, by the black hole. So, I'm going to show what I mean by this. Because of the size of the black hole, I cannot put it inside. It's actually going to cross the event horizon and basically disappear. It's going to get eaten. So, I can only place it the, the closest, I mean, the, uh, the best scenario would be to place it just right here. Just right here. And this is actually the best I can do. It's literally right outside the event horizon. And it's already moving at 210,000 kilometers per second, which is really not enough for us to have such a huge time dilation. To have such a huge time dilation, you have to move at approximately 99% of speed of light. So what is happening here? How is that possible? Well, let me just erase this planet because we don't need this anymore. Well, the, what's happening here um, is that all black holes have three uh, values. They have mass, they have charge, and they have spin. And when the black hole is spinning, what it does is sort of imagine what um, imagine a mixer. When you when you mix something with a mixer, especially if it's a liquid, the liquid gets dragged along, and you create this kind of a vortex. And this is what's happening here. A black hole that is spinning really, really, really fast is going to create this vortex around it essentially a vortex of space-time and it's going to move at a really really fast speed sometimes even faster than speed of light but in this case it moves at the speed of approximately uh well i don't actually know the exact value but it, it moves just enough so that the time dilation on this planet is uh closer to the speed of light so essentially even though it's not moving at the speed of light because of the spin and because of the drag of the time space um, around the black hole, uh, it actually it, it, it kind of seems like the planet is moving at speed of uh, 0.999 of speed of light. So let's actually calculate how fast it must move to get such a huge time dilation. And according to Wolfram Alpha, the speed must be at approximately 299,792 kilometers per second, which is essentially almost the speed of light. It's it's even more than 99%. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means that uh, because of the uh, spin of the black hole, the spin of this huge massive black hole, uh, the time space around it moves really, really fast as well, creating this kind of a dilation. So this is the only way that it's possible to have such a huge time dilation. Just orbiting around uh, a non-spinning black hole will not create enough, uh, unfortunately will not create enough time dilation. So this is something that's kind of briefly mentioned in the movie, but I think most people didn't actually realize that this is a super fastly spinning black hole, and I believe we can actually make uh, make a black hole spin in this game as well. Let's actually find this value. 
it's the rotational period right here and I'm going to make it spin super fast at approximately 0.001 second just to kind of simulate this I don't think we can simulate the actual time dilation here but we can pretend that it's there just to make it a little bit more realistic so now we have Miller's world that's essentially uh, just like in the movie it has a time dilation of ridiculously high anyway so let's go back to uh, to the rest of this system so just to go through every planet here, so we have Gargantio in the middle, we have Miller's World right here, we have our neutron star somewhere um, behind them, and then we have, uh, where is it, we have Edmund's World, which is the rocky planet, no sorry, we have, yes, Edmund's World is the rocky planet right after it, then we have Man's World, that's the icy planet, the uh, much colder planet, and then we have some other gas giants or some other planets that are orbiting around all of that. Now, somewhere in there, there's also the wormhole, but we don't really know where it's located. The only thing we know is that, for some reason, it really takes them almost no time to get from the wormhole to the man's world, to Edmund's world, uh, and to um, to Gargantua. Now, that is, this is actually what my main problem with this movie um, arose. Uh, using a spaceship that they used in the movie, there is almost absolutely no way for any spaceship that we currently have to essentially go from any wormhole that might be somewhere out there, or even this planet, to a planet orbiting around a black hole such as Miller's World, because this planet is moving ridiculously fast. And so to catch up to it, to actually have enough what we call Delta V to uh, even land on this planet, you would need to have an amazingly, incredibly powerful spaceship. Uh, the spaceship that they use in the movie, if it, were, if it was actually capable of reaching Miller's world and then even, even further on falling into the black hole, this type of a spaceship would be able to actually easily reach a star uh, closer, closer to start to to our planet essentially to Earth, uh, without really even going to the wormhole. We, we wouldn't even need to go to the, into the wormhole if we could actually reach Miller's world from a wormhole, uh, because it just it's 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 ridiculously fast. It's close to speed of light, and uh, reaching that kind of a star, uh, the kind of a planet would be almost impossible. Now that was actually my main concern with the science behind this movie, because it's a tiny spaceship and it doesn't have enough delta v to even get to one of these planets, not, not to mention take off take off from the one of those planets. And the other thing is, to fall into the black hole the way it did in the movie, you have to uh, essentially lose a lot of speed. You have to move at a speed close to speed of light to even enter a black hole, so that would be quite impossible as well. And just like I mentioned before, even if we were on the Miller's world, and if we decided to stay on the Miller's world, the problem is that the neutron star would actually die within a thousand years of living on the Miller's world, so there is a bit of a discrepancy there, so why choose this particular system if it's actually going to pretty much die soon. And anyway, before I get too critical, I would like to just say that I love the movie and it was actually one of the better sci-fi movies I've seen in quite a while. And we're definitely going to need to come back to this simulation again and talk about uh, Interstellar and some of the other science that they've used in the movie because they've created an amazing universe and they've created an amazing world that is worth talking about and investigating more and more. And Miller's world is definitely one of the coolest sci-fi worlds that has been ever created. Except my Miller's world for some reason stopped spinning, I should probably give it a bit of a spin. Uh, and anyway, so thank you for watching, please subscribe, check out some of the other videos and do come back because this will be a multi-part video and I'll definitely come back to the universe of Interstellar and try to play around with this particular system again. Mostly because look at how awesome this is. These awesome effects that this black hole is creating are pretty epic. Anyway, thank you for watching and game you later. Bye bye.